It's impossible to predict what will happen in the next few years, but that doesn't stop us from discussing what we think could happen, and researchers have a rough idea of what we can expect in the years to come. So here are five possible outcomes that we humans could be facing in the near and long distant future, some of which are actually pretty scary. Humans will expand to other planets. You are all probably familiar with projects such as the Mars One mission, whose intent is to populate Mars with humans by 2025, and judging by other people's increasing interest in reaching other planets, it's safe to say that in the next few hundred years, the probability of humans colonising another planet is high. Whether that is the right thing to do is a whole nother debate, but just how close are we to populating Mars or any other planet, and what sort of timescale can we expect? Well first we need to understand the reason to leave Earth in the first place. There are two main reasons that people put forward. One, simply our own desire to explore and populate other planets, and the other is that we will have no choice but to abandon the planet due to a man-made or natural disaster. First let's look at simply our own desire to leave Earth as a way of scientifically exploring other planets and achieving something that has never been done before. Currently there are three companies working on making this possible. Mars One, SpaceX and NASA. Mars One have since been hit with a lot of criticism, and their mission to Mars does not seem as realistic as once thought. But SpaceX, who are working closely with NASA, believe they will be the first to put a human on the red planet. In 2005, NASA Administrator Michael Griffin said, I'm talking about that one day, I don't know when that day is, but there will be more human beings who live off the Earth than on it. So according to him, eventually colonising other planets is probably going to happen. But aside from our own desires to explore the universe, what if we had no choice but to leave Earth and head for a new planet to live? We already consume more a year than what our planet can safely sustain, and the World Wildlife Fund estimates that by 2030, we will be consuming two planets worth of natural resources yearly. Theoretical physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking has argued for space colonisation as a means of saving humanity. In 2001, he predicted that the human race would become extinct within the next thousand years, unless colonies could be established in space. But who will be the first to get us to another planet? Mars seems to be the number one planet to get to right now, and the Mars Colonial Transporter, which is a project by SpaceX to design and build reusable rocket engines, launch vehicles and space capsules to transport humans to Mars and return to Earth, want to put humans on Mars by 2026, and NASA recently announced that they would try to put a human on Mars in 2035. So this is all potentially going to happen in our lifetime. If you want to know a little more about the possibility of a mission to Mars, then you will probably enjoy the video I made a while back about Mars One, and even though a candidate for the one-way mission to Mars said that the whole thing is dangerously flawed, so the mission probably won't be happening, I still point out a lot of information that is relevant to human colonisation of planets. Personally, I don't think we have any idea how to control this planet, let alone trying to populate another. Most of our ocean isn't even explored yet. Now, I'm not delving deep into this, but millions of animals are going extinct simply because humans are taking over forests and land, millions of people are being convicted of killing each other every year, and most countries are sinking deeper into debt, drug rates are up, alcoholism is up, murder is up, and illness and obesity are up. Although I'm all up for the thought of populating other planets, you can't help but feel it might be a good idea to sort out this planet before we think about leaving it. Our characteristics. There is no denying that our characteristics and features have changed over the years, and if you've ever wondered whether they will continue to change, then you're not alone. Scientists have been looking into this for a while, and have come up with some remarkable theories on how our appearance and characteristics may change in the years to come. Now, although this does sound a little crazy, it's widely believed by scientists that eventually humans will split into two separate species, one will be an elite attractive society, and the other a separate society of unintelligent, ugly, goblin-like humans, considered far inferior than the elite. It's thought that the human race will reach this physical peak in around the year 3000, with the perfect elite human being around 6 feet to 7 feet tall, and living up to 40 years longer than the average human does now. Men will apparently have symmetrical chiselled facial features and deeper voices, 
and women will have smooth glossy head hair but no body hair and larger eyes. Both species may also have more receded chins due to processed foods reducing the need for longer chewing, and there will also apparently be no racial differences as all humans will have a single coffee-coloured skin tone. But although this so-called perfect human may look good on the outside, on the inside things may not be so good, for both human species in fact. Social and interactive skills will be lost, and our immune system will be much weaker due to antibiotics, medicine, and our lack of interaction with healthy bacterias. People have pointed out the resemblance of this prediction to the 1895 novel by H.G. Wells called The Time Machine. It tells the story of how humans will split into groups, the wealthy and the primitive. But you are probably saying, well how does this affect me, and why do I care about what humans will look like in a few thousand years? But there are a few subtle changes that are happening right now. For example, we no longer need our wisdom teeth, as we do not rip food up with our teeth like we used to, as we now have knives and forks. So up to 35% of the population are now born without wisdom teeth. And your appendix, which is actually a bit of a mystery as to why we have it in the first place, as it has no use in modern humans, could be gone altogether over time. So that is a few changes that are happening now, and some predictions for what the human characteristics and features could be like in the future. Robots If you've ever seen iRobot or similar films, it really does feel like something like a robot takeover could happen. And Stephen Hawking backed this up by saying, It's not a case of will robots take over our jobs and lives, it's more a case of when. He believes it could be in as little as a hundred years time, since artificial intelligence is progressing at an alarming rate. It's not going to be long till office workers are replaced by software, taxis are self-driven, factory work is done by robots, and even medical care could be taken over, reducing the need for humans. Why would you want a human to perform your surgery if an attentive robot could perform it at a 100% success rate at a fraction of the cost? Why would an employer want a human who is slower, more expensive, and limited to work time, when they could have a faster robot that could work around the clock? Unlike some of the future predictions for us, this is already happening. Many factories use some robots instead of humans, surgery is much more advanced due to robotics, and cars are being developed that can drive themselves. Professor Hawking has gone even further in his prediction, saying that one day robots could be the cause of the end of the human race. He fears if we do not ensure computers are aligned to human goals, they could evolve faster and stronger than humans becoming smarter and more intelligent than their human developers, with the potential to no longer need human intervention and be able to redesign themselves at an ever-increasing rate, leaving humans unable to compete and ultimately replaced by machines. Just imagine that, a robot is created that then creates an even more intelligent robot, that then creates an even more intelligent robot, and so on. Sounds pretty crazy, but don't worry, at the moment, artificial intelligence is some way off creating a robot that will be intelligent enough to cast away humans and take over the world. So although it's a possibility for the future, it's a long way off. So what if we are in fact the robots? Transhumanism is a movement of improving the human condition through the use of technology, and one of the core beliefs is that it will create eternal life through genetic engineering, nanotech, cloning and other ever-emerging technologies. It's a distinct possibility, unlike the creation of robots, transhumanism will create humans with technologically enhanced super features and strengths, boosting physical, intellectual and psychological capabilities beyond anything a human could naturally achieve. A form of transhumanism is already being used by the US military to train snipers. It's called Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, or TDCS and it speeds up reaction times and learning speed by running a very weak electric current through the brain. A more extreme version of this could see our minds uploaded to a computer in an attempt to preserve the details held in the brain. Providing a permanent backup of the brain, meaning long after a person has died, we will still have a copy of their functions stored in a mind file. This could then be implanted into a robot or another type of functional body, and also imagine we could upload skills and intelligence to our own brains at will. Now that is truly insane. You may have also seen some very cool technology being tested out called powered exoskeleton or exosuits that will allow soldiers to run, walk and jump with the help of hydraulics and motors. This could drastically change the way soldiers fight in battle and is definitely something to keep an eye out for in the future. 
But these suits are not just for warfare, there was a shipyard in South Korea that tested a robotic suit on their workers that gave them superhuman strength. They are hoping to continue the development of their suit in order for workers to be able to lift 200 pounds at ease, which will reduce the need for other machines and increase workflow. Despite the obvious benefits of transhumanism, many have pointed out the potential dangers. Just think, if everyone started to live way beyond life expectancy, the earth would become very overpopulated. But maybe one day, just like smartphones today seem nothing out of the ordinary to the current generations, being able to download things onto your brain, have robotic limbs, and even control your heart and other functions with a device will be a normal thing in a few thousand years. There will be no future. All of this planning may not even become of anything, because what if there is no future? Many people believe that the world is going to end, and over the years there have been many predictions and even specific dates as to when this will happen. You may have seen my video about times we could have come close to extinction, but what about extinction in the future? I could go on and on about some things that could end life, such as an all-out nuclear war, a polar shift, giant earthquakes and asteroids, but a more worrying thing that I'll focus on that is very interesting is called a solar storm and could give us only 12 hours warning before potentially destroying life as we know it. Almost every second, the sun shoots a burst of charged subatomic particles in the form of solar wind into space at speeds of 1 million miles per hour. Fortunately, this wind is weak enough not to penetrate the Earth's magnetic field, but scientists say it's only a matter of time before a devastating eruption on the surface of the sun comes hurtling towards us with catastrophic consequences. The Earth could experience an energy explosion the equivalent to 10 billion Hiroshima bombs all exploding at the same time. It would destroy communication systems and vital services such as sanitation, medicine, power and transport networks, and the world would be plunged into darkness. With the world reliance on technology, although most of us would survive the initial impact, the damage would bring the world to a virtual standstill. What is perhaps more worrying is that scientists predict that there is a 1% chance of Earth being hit by a solar storm, with little or no warning. But since this is being continually monitored, we would know before it was going to happen, so we could act quickly to make sure the impact would not cause nuclear weapons and power plants to detonate, which amongst the chaos of the storm would almost certainly cause absolute devastation. All this really isn't far-fetched either. Earth was hit by a solar storm in 1859, that took just over 17 hours to get here, and researchers have shown that if we had the same storm now that we did in 1859, then it would have serious consequences on us, since unlike back in the 1800s, we are very dependent on technology for almost everything we do. So to name a few effects a geomagnetic storm could have on Earth, is that all electronic communications would be down, life support machines would shut off, planes would fall from the sky, most cars apart from old crank cars wouldn't run, cargo ships would stop, credit cards would freeze, freezers and fridges would stop, along with computers, radios, televisions and telephones. And since electronic water pumps pump water into most of our homes, we would have no running water, so we'd have to resort to other forms of water collection. And as winter sets in, many would be unable to cope with the freezing conditions. But although all of this sounds scary, the chances of it happening are only 1%, but still, maybe those doomsday preppers are not as crazy as some people make out. So, that's five future predictions for us humans. Personally, I think instead of populating Mars, building robots to increase workflow, having robotic limbs and organs and such, although all those things are incredible, how about we focus on the millions of humans who are still suffering all around us? How about we fix the more important things on our planet? Start looking after Earth's animals, solve world hunger, poverty, crime and illness, before we start working on other things. I still find it crazy how on one side of the world people are dying from obesity and then there are people on the other side dying from starvation. But anyway, don't let these predictions worry or stop you from enjoying life. I hope you've enjoyed this video, have an awesome day and see you next week for another one.